morning. Our readings from John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. Peace I leave you with, I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Thank you, Carolyn. So I want to talk a little bit about fear today. Um, why? Well, I get a sense uh, that the world at the moment, you know, in the world at the moment, there's a lot of fear. You know, on an international level, there's fear about who's going to bomb who next. Um, in our country, there's a lot, there's a lot of fear uh, about where we're going in the future, both sides fearing what the other has to offer. And I think in our own lives, there's also a lot of fear. Fear of death, fear of getting ill, fear of losing stuff, fear of losing people, fear for our futures and the future of those around us. So to some extent, I think fear is a dominant emotion in our lives. I'm not sure that that's necessarily the right thing. Um, yes, fear is a natural emotion, and that it, it, fear keeps us alive and keeps us alert. And animals use fear to keep themselves ready from anything that might want to prey on them and then use adrenaline to spur them to escape when they're in danger. That's true, but I don't think that you know, necessarily the level of fear that we live at is appropriate. You know, we do fear so much. We fear humiliation. We fear, you know, what others think about us. Um, we fear being left out. We fear about being left alone. We fear being unloved. We fear being left behind, not conforming to what others expect of us, not looking right. I mean, the list just goes on, the sort of things that we, we fear. And I think fear robs us of the enjoyment of life. In fact, I think fear robs us of joy. And in our modern world, the one thing we could do more of, I think, of is joy. And the reason I think there's a shortage of joy is because of the fear. Fear is really about danger. And that's the origin of the, world, uh, of the word F-A-E-R, uh, which is the, in German and Old English, that's the, where the entomology, that's where it comes from. And the word F-A-E-R meant danger. We, we have fear to prepare ourselves for danger. And interesting enough, the, the etymology of the word danger, it, it comes from the word dominus in Latin, which means lord. Danger is really about that which has power over us. That's where, the, where it comes from. A fear comes... You know, fear then comes from preparing ourselves uh, for that which has power over us. And when we think something or someone has power over us, we're, you know, in truth, we're abrogating our own power and we're assigning it to something else. When we think, oh, well, that or this has power over us, we're saying that, that the power that we have is less than the power that's over us. We allow ourselves that which is outside of us, we allow that which is outside of us to lord over us and we prepare for the consequences, hence we fear. Now, there are endless books looking at anxiety and fear and I'm not a therapist. And just like I always say that the first step to a healthy life is remembering to take your meds, um, 
Also, I think I would say how important it is to listen to your therapist. So I don't want to get into that area of how one deals with the anxiety and the fears. I'm sure you've all got you know, ways uh, of coping of that. Um, what I'd like to do more is emphasize how to get ourselves into a place where we're less likely to fear in the first place. And I think that it's all about looking at where our real power lies and, and how much of that power we do tend to give away. Um, in that reading that Carolyn read, we had Jesus really pointing the way how to lessen the way that fear affects us. He said, said specifically, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. And in other words, don't fear. Believe in God. And that really is the first step of taking authority in our lives, that we're not dependent on what others do, but our authority comes from the reality of, of a divine nature in the universe and us identifying with that. that. That's where our real power comes from. When we forget that, we think anyone, anything can come and get us. But our real authority comes from that. There is an order in the universe. And what's being said is that we can rely on that order. Now, that doesn't mean to say that bad things will not happen to us. That's the downside of this. Bad things are going to happen to us. You know. Us having that understanding doesn't stop bad things happening to us. But if we're able to draw from that strength that's within us, then actually there's nothing to fear. Our dominus, our law, that which is going to have dominion over us, is actually a part of us, and it'll prepare us for whatever comes our way. That famous phrase... It'll be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, then it's not the end. That reliance on what is within means that ultimately we can be okay with anything that comes our way. We don't need to worry for ourselves. We can have a sure hope of being okay. And I think that is an important part that, you know, we fear, but actually we can deal with what's coming. Whatever it is, we have the ability to deal with it. It's within us, our ability. And, that, and that's, you know, beautifully Nikki re- sang Psalm 23 by Alan Fletcher, which uh, who runs the music festival here, I think, the same Alan Fletcher. And in that Psalm 23, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's what it means. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. It doesn't mean to say that those things will go away. It'll said, it says, I will fear no evil. Rather than looking out and going, ooh, uh, we look from within and know that we're connected with that which contains all things. And then the reading goes on. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am, and you know the place where I'm going. That, that line's often read at funerals, actually, and it confronts the ultimate fear, which is non-existence. That is the ultimate fear. All fear, on one level or another, is about non-existence, of ending up just not being around, whether it be not being around life or not being around our friends or our family or our home or our health. It's about loss. Fear fear is about loss. And Jesus is saying there is nothing to lose. I will go and prepare a place for you and I'll take you that where you may be also where I am. And Jesus is in that place of the no fear. And that's, that's what he's talking about. Jesus is saying there is nothing to lose, that there is always a place of safety for us. And funny enough, that's what the word salvation means. It's not about you know, just praying the prayer and all that. So salvation means literally a place of safety. Jesus is really saying that whatever our circumstances, there is a room that we can go to within that will keep us safe. 
and that ultimately we're connected to that divine nature and it is to that divine nature that we return. And it's this that enables us to put fear in the right place in our minds. And we do, we look out in the world and we think for our children, we think, you know, what is going on? But actually, if we can come to that place within ourselves, that place of safety, it enables us to put everything in a particular context. It also enables us to look after those around us because it means that we're coming from that place of safety and we can include, we can say what Jesus said to those people, you know, I, where I am, I am preparing a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. And we say that to our family and friends which is to realize that we have the power within us that will enable us to meet and overcome whatever comes our way. Be that personal inconvenience, the judgments of those around us, material loss, physical loss, the loss of loved ones, or even the loss of our lives. Which is why we don't need to fear when we look at the news. Yes, we can emphasize we can empathise, rather, we can empathise with the suffering that humanity is going through and try to do something about it. But ultimately, we do also have many rooms within us and we are a part of something that is vastly greater than that which is going to be inflicted on us by petty dictators who try to make us afraid. They try to make us afraid so they can control us. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And that, there is the final assurance. We have that peace within us, as we've been looking at, funnily enough, here over the last few months. And if you've missed it, we've been doing courses on being at peace and on harmony. And you can find, if you're interested, on several pages in our website. If you want to look at the little red card in front of you, you'll find where to see, see those courses. If you want to actually be on our mailing list, that's the blue uh, one. And, and there is, you know, the key thing is that we have that peace within us. It's not given as the world gives, which is when it wants to take dominion over us, but it's given from within that we may draw from it. So the imperative is not to let our hearts be troubled, neither be afraid. And it's up to us to intervene in that. When we begin to feel that fear, then we go to the place of peace where our hearts are untroubled. To not let the world have its dominion over that place of peace, but to know that we've been given a place of safety, that still point in the turning world that is a room that is prepared for us. And we shouldn't let our hearts be troubled by what is coming to us from the outside. That is the place where our lives came from in the first place. It is where we are nourished and enabled to live, and it's where we shall return to when it's all over. We're given a role to play in life by the greater self within. And our life and the way we live it is that role. But we shouldn't confuse that role with the greater self that's within and which contains all. That is what we should be trusting in. And when we do that, there's no need to fear because there is nothing that has dominion over the greater self. Nikki.